thank you very much for making it through it. Another um, very, very uh, substantive day. Um, substance and, and serious content has always been one of our main objectives here. And it's also nice that we've um, seen a lot, a lot of optimism. Too often in the news business, we dwell on problems, but we've just heard convincing evidence that when it comes to climate finance, for instance, solution, there are a lot of solutions that are at hand. Um, we've heard a lot of great optimistic ideas over the past two days, but this forum is more than just about ideas. It's about taking action. So I'm really proud to announce one of the most exciting Bloomberg New Economy initiatives, a cancer moonshot that can build a bridge between the US and China. It's an idea that grew out of our 2019 forum in Beijing and aims to accelerate the quest for cancer therapies. We have a short video to explain the project. Please take a listen. represent the critical step of translating scientific discovery to actually saving people's lives. I was diagnosed with stage four triple negative breast cancer. I was given a 4% chance of survival. I am just weeks away from the five year mark, the benchmark. Currently, I think it's 12% of people with advanced triple negative breast cancer make it to that five year mark. A clinical trial saved my life. Patient access is absolutely central to everything we do. Without patients having access to the medicines they need, these innovations are meaningless. Cancer has the ability, because of the human factor, to unfreeze normal political divides, either within countries, between conservatives and progressives, or frankly, between nation states, whatever the side of the ideological divide they happen to fall. Why don't we turn bilateral cancer research into the ping pong diplomacy of the future? Obviously, the two countries are seeking to collaborate on climate change because there are common interests at stake. But why not do the same in terms of one of the biggest killers, both in China and in the United States and around the world? This would mean a huge amount to average Chinese and average Americans, and I think would play its own small part in unfreezing what's become a near frozen relationship. These challenges require cooperation among nations and among the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. No single nation can take on these issues alone. It's up to all of us. Have seen that the cancer experience is, is absolutely universal. It transcends all geographies, race, ethnicity, social background. It's a human experience. And the suffering is the same. So together, I think uh, this is an example of, of how this forum can go from, from words to action. Um, I think we can really make meaningful change in areas like cancer treatments and save millions of lives. In fact, there was a breakout session yesterday with some of the world's largest uh, pharmaceutical company CEOs in the cancer space. And on, a, on video from Beijing was China's most important regulator uh, on cancer and, and other related um, medicines, just to show the the le level of connectivity that we're bringing between China and the rest of the world, which is at the heart of this, pro this, this, this uh, project. So tomorrow, we're gonna shift our focus to geopolitics. Uh, we added a whole morning to the program. Um, 
this year because it seemed obvious that given what's going on in the news, we needed a lot more time to discuss one of the biggest challenges facing multinational businesses, which is how to navigate an increasingly divided world as the U.S. and China step up their rivalry. So you won't want to miss our interview with John Kerry. Uh, he's joining us live from America first thing in the morning. And we'll be welcoming back to the forum uh, our good friend Subramanyam Jaishankar, the Indian Minister of External Affairs, who really is one of the keenest observers of geopolitics in the world today. So um, thank you very much. See you all tomorrow and enjoy the evening.